Hello everyone, my name is Bubble Zest and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. In today's video we're doing a guide to the achievement Crush the Dream. Let's begin. Force, create an intelligence agency, always one of my favourite things. The research slots, nothing too special. You could do obviously the standard more than usual. But um, we will also grab some support equipment today. Or our civilian factories, we'll just build more military factories for now. Eat them more. The actual military factories that we have, we're going to jump the tank, the interwar bomber, put everything in the future into guns, leave it like that. The navy is really not important to build any of these extra ships, so we're going to get rid of all of them. We're going to build some more envoys for now, but if you want to build subs and the like, there's no harm in that. The focus, what we're going to do to start is actually remitted rearmament. For this army, let's just gather it all up, 36, but before we divide it into our army, we'll go to all the Dominions and get their divisions. So we'll do Canada, Raj, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. There we go, that's an extra 40 troops. Now let's divide this into some okay stacks. And now, of course, let's gather up this army and make it just one simple army. Of course, for now, we'll use Montgomery. Why not? But we'll just give uh, the standard generals like Miles, Harry, Henry, say, uh, Tom Moore, since he's now general. Why not? He's probably one of the UK's better starting generals, as he has a trait to begin with. You know, despite the fact he hasn't enlisted yet and is 16 years old. Yes, he's the first child soldier in this game. But yes, for all of these units, what we're going to do is put them on the border with the US from around here, all the way around here, and then just give them the frontline order all the way down to San Francisco and Los Angeles and San Diego. Speaking of so, you can also give any general you like all the air force that the UK has. I see no harm in that. And that'll do for now. That's plenty of aircraft. 600 and 400. Now, next up, we're going to grab British Malaya's troops and put them on a naval invasion into the Philippines. There's no real reason to do this, but there's also no real reason not to do this. It just means that you could take the Philippines directly in the peace deal. To choose any general you like, put them on a naval invasion here and have them hit this port here. There we go. Next, of course, there's a lot to do when it comes to Britain's massive, massive navy, so let's gather it all up. There we go. Merge it all into one and then send it to Brunei. Deal with it in a moment. But yes, that's all. now everything. So let's go to speed 5 and begin. Right, that's limited rearmament done. I fully suggest you support Turkey on the Montreux Convention. You get some free experience. No harm in doing so. Now, we could do another focus for the moment, but in my opinion, not going to. We are going to wait for, for another 149 days before doing focus or so again. Maybe a bit longer. So, wait up. And there you go. No harm in supporting Turkey on the Montreux Convention. So, with three days until the London Naval Treaty is over, what we're going to do is grab home fleet and then grab all carriers, battleships, cruisers and heavy cruisers. And now they're in a new fleet. Now we're just gonna briefly take out the battle cruisers and put HMS Hood in its own fleet. Why HMS Hood? Well, it's our pride of the fleet, of course. But there is no reason for us to blow up our fleet's pride without reason. It'd be a waste for us. Now for these battle cruisers, get rid of them. And for all of these tasty other ships, look at them. They're so good. But we gotta get rid of them. And there we go. That just leaves us with some light cruisers, destroyers and subs, and the HMS Hood. Now you'll see why in a minute. Look at this, the decision for the naval treaty to change. Now we'll just wait for the treaty to get signed. There we go. Just before though, we'll just make sure we grab sub 2 for our research, since we lack heavy ships now. But what we're going to do is issue a warning to Chile. Now we are hoping that Chile will give us a war goal. Either they commit to disarmament, but if we've done this right, 
Chile will not be able to do it in time and soon enough we'll get a war goal. I've sent a warning to Japan, this is also very useful. It has its benefits. I'm also going to send one to Italy. We could go to war with Japan, but no need. We're still waiting on Chile. There we go, we got our war goal. The beauty of this is that we can declare war on them. There we go. Call in Canada, and now we'll be at war with the US. Now make sure that your navy, however muted it might be, is on strike force so that your troops for the Philippines can invade. Now that we're at war also, we'll do limited rearmament. Now we'll just rush down America, there you go. We need to at least get to Washington and all the way to Los Angeles, so this will take a good month or two, but make good use of the gaps in the US's line at this time. There we go, there's the capitulation of the United States. Now, as you can see, Italy has 10 war score. Now, this is good that we also got Japan out of the war as well by kicking them out of the naval treaty, but Italy has war score, so we will have to eventually annex the United States completely. If Italy wasn't in this peace deal, I would just leave the US in one state. But Italy being in this peace deal means they will eventually get the US as a puppet. If you get lucky and it's only you and Canada in this peace deal, don't bother, just do so. So, so for us, we're going to prioritise an annex in the US. Make sure you take the Panama Canal, always useful. But for everything else, we're just going to take everything. I see no reason not to, to be honest. And there you go, 6th of the 7th, 1936, the day America fell. Now we still have a Philippines to deal with, but that's okay. I mean, a Chile, I should say. Now send the fleet all the way to Panama Canal and Pitcairn Island. We're going to send some of the units there, but we'll send the subs to Panama. We're going to send Tom Moore's troops to Pitcairn to deal with the naval invasion, and we'll send Miles to the Panama Canal in case he needs support. But work on just annexing Chile for the moment. And there you go, France has declared war on Chile. Unlike Italy, who will be at war as well, you should definitely, definitely invite France. Now, there's a beauty in this. France is currently doing review foreign policy. Hopefully, they'll also do stuff like buy time or permit commitments. It's good that they can't do invite communist advisors after they've done this focus. So after this, there you go, review colonial policy, that's very good. Ironically, they do something similar. What we're going to do now is work down changing course. But for this, it means France is now locked in its ideology and cannot change it. For political power, I fully suggest that you save it. You're going to need a lot of it. Also, we will definitely plan Tom's name innovations once he gets to Pitcairn Island. But for now, we'll just wait up. Now the main reason we annexed the US is of course for the achievement, but also we look at this, tackle capitalism, the US has to exist, so we are eventually going to have to release America. It is quite annoying, I must admit, but there's nothing we can particularly do. Oh, I did say don't spend political power, I should have said you should spend it on limited conscription, as that's a nice bonus that you will need if you want to do the focus, secure the dominions, which we will do. There you go, that's a change of course, and of course do test to the trade unions as soon as you can, but we can't because we're at war, so we'll do guide the colonies until we can. And also, 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 ban fascism just means you get a tiny bit more. When we support, it's not that important. 
and to be fair also we get a lot of political power thanks to revisiting colonial policy. And there goes Shilly. We'll just annex them again. There we go. Welcome to the club. I mean Empire. There you go, that's good timing as well. We can now do sessions to the trade unions. Now, if you want to do move to the dominions, I'll link a guy in the description. It'll be much more useful than I could ever explain it. But yes, for now, we're just going to work down towards sessions to the trade unions and actually flip communists. Continue working on our course, withdrawing from many of the controversial areas, upgrading our industry and the like. Hell, we could even go to War of Japan if we wanted to. Maybe I'll do that. But for the right now, I'm just going to focus on flipping communists. But it's good that we've done France and our faction. As long as they confirm Eastern commitments one way or another, they'll be locked out of getting a faction of their own. And of course strengthening the little entente. But it'll be at least two years until we flip ideology, so I'm pretty confident on that. Right, time for us to hold a referendum. Ugh. We are now communists. Now it is time for us to smooth the secure the dominions. Like I said, I did my best following the guide. I will link to be in a position to do this, but of course you should definitely follow it. And of course also France <laughs> actually does not have a rule they can make factions set. France is completely screwed and I don't think this join the Entente will do anything but I'm curious. There we go, we to secure the dominions and we can only impose partial law on two of them. That's okay, we can definitely work around this, but for now we're going to continue to decolonize, do stuff like self-government for Africa, because we need the political power too. So let's get to work on uh, all of this. There we go, we've now imposed martial law on all of the dominions. That's very, very good. Right, time to install some communist governments. Let's start with the Raj and Canada. Nice. Now let's continue down decolonization. Oh, that is a nice event. Raj is always a hard one to get. Yep, we lost the war goal with Japan, but oh well. I was never really too sure on that anyway. Now it's Australia's turn. I do not think Dixon's portrait has been changed in a very long time. Finally, it's New Zealand's turn. There we go. We have secured all of the dominions under the fold of communism. Now we're going to delete all the orders and send them back home. At least Britain, that is. Now, Germany's declared war on Czechoslovakia, and I think it's in our best interest to go to war with France. Why? Quite simple. If we release the US, there's a very likely chance that they will create a faction with them. And we'll prepare for war with France, too. Just need to wait for most of our units to get home, and we'll prepare a name invasion. Doesn't matter too much. Most of our units are already there. Well, that's decolonization. Now let's just defy France. We'll also begin working down towards lack of capitalism. We only need the US to be around for this focus, for Bermuda invasion launch point and crush the dream we do not. And now let's eliminate the upper class. So who left us? Not too many actually. But I am gonna kick out Malaya when I can. And yes, because of this, we keep the Dominions as our puppets forever. 
Now, before we start the War of France, I just want to know that our more divisions look like this. I just wanted to see if they'd be good for invasions. And now France is doing defensive strategy, and so it's very good that we're going now. And we also have France's cipher that we can break at any time. By the way, do not, under any circumstances, puppet France. There is n it's not good. You'll just get caught in a war in perpetuity. And there goes France and... Oh, wait, what? Oh, never mind. Right, like I said, do not puppet France, but feel free to take whatever you like. There's no real harm taking some new puppets, friends, as long as they're not the normal France tag. Of course, Germany will eventually come after you. And there we go. That's the peace deal of France. I'm sure I've made someone very happy, because I have... And Brits Creek effectively again. I've liberated Brittany, and most importantly, I have liberated Chad. Nice. Now we'll move back to the US border and prepare for War of America, and maybe Mexico if we're really feeling adventurous. Now just keep going down the focus tree for the good of the revolution, follow Moscow, and then we'll talk. This seems counterproductive to exile them to Canada. But oh well, we'll do it. Now time for the good of the revolution and let's justify Mexico. Right, let's annex Mexico, not just for the oil. Now let's just wait for following Moscow to be done, see if they're in. Bye allies. I hate it every time. It gets rid of your divisions that you have from your puppets. I really, really hate it. Like, why? Why would a player ever want to do that just because I joined a faction? It's really stupid. Right, next, let's release the United States of America. Not as a puppet, though, no. Not as a puppet. Just release them. There, there they are again. Now let's tackle capitalism. And justify on them 60 days. Perfect. Yeah, try and enforce that. You and your zero divisions, America. <laughs> they have a war goal on us. If they use that, that'd be very ballsy. We've now made Tom Moore an invader, which is ever more impressive since, again, he wasn't even enlisted at this time. You know, there's only so many divisions the US can put out this quickly in 210 days, so I'm going to be nice. Wait. We'll do, do it via Crush the Dream, and if they declare war on us, that's their own problem. Who leads the Allies now, then? British Malaya? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Malay, People's Republic. Oh... <laughs> Why Bermuda Invasion Launch Point isn't 35 days? Oh well. Again, America, very, very weak. Wow, they managed to get... One heavy cruiser out, lucky them. I don't think that's going to come in handy. I really don't. That is an annoyingly good designed fascist flag for a puppeted 
Best country. Time now to crush the dream. Still no sign of any resistance from America. Might just be a total walk in the park. There we go, there's crush the dream. There's almost like no American resistance. This will be a walk in the park, even more than the first war. There's calling Canada just so we're okay, and then just walk it in, as it were. Focus. Do you really need any at this point? Do whatever. Well, I reckon that's that. Uh, you know, I don't think that was war. I think that was pest control. But yes, do what the achievement says. You, you must puff it to the United States. And there you go, the British North American Territories. Well, this concludes the achievement run for Crush the Dream. We killed America twice for almost no reason. Once capitalist and once communist. This has been a... Fun little guide. Communist Britain isn't too bad, it's just definitely not very extensive, is it? It's like, once you do the two years worth of blowing your country up, what do you get? Not much, really. When you can do things like the King's Party or organise the black shirts. But it, this was fun, relatively. Crush the Dream has a few ways to do it. You could have just done Secure the Dominions and Smash Down through Canada, but this ensured that it was just a walk in the park for us. So I thank you for watching this video, I do hope you've enjoyed it, leave any suggestions for future ones in the comments below, always looking for new ideas, but it is a very hot day, so until next time everybody, this has been me, Bubble Zest, and goodbye.